Se faltar uma cadeira, o Miguel te espera ali, depois vem. É para cima. Falta. Miguel, se for assim, mais um. Falta uma cadeira. É. Hello, good morning to everybody. Muito bom dia a todos. Vamos a começar com a sessão 2 da indústria sobre a micro hidrogeração e controle do sistema uh, com vista às grelhas de água inteligentes. Em primeiro lugar, quero agradecer à organização deste evento. Não é um evento muito, muito comum. E porquê? Porque também convidamos uh, pessoas externas para esta conferência. Eu gostaria de agradecer à organização, a parte portuguesa e a parte inglesa de WATF, e uh, por este convite de todos estes espíritos e alguns espíritos adicionais também na assistência por terem sido capazes de juntar estes especialistas uh, nesta área, que é um, a recuperação de energia e, e uh, grelhas a smart para trazer a sua experiência. E é muito interessante demonstrar aqui as principais vantagens desta implementação uh, da micro -hidro, com vista a uma gestão mais eficiente e sustentável em relação ao nexus da energia hídrica para um futuro de grelhas de água inteligentes.
Nesta apresentação vamos uh, dar aqui um resumo sobre este re projeto Redon. Neste projeto vamos implementar soluções uh, micro-hidro, também vamos dar um resumo municipal das oportunidades e desafios nestas redes de água. Vamos falar sobre o controle de sistemas em relação à detecção de fugas, a variação de fluxo e de pressão, algumas oportunidades regulamentares, alguns casos de estudo e na secção final vamos ter uma oportunidade para perguntas e respostas, bem como algum debate. Peço-vos para terem cuidado com o tempo, para não excederem o tempo, são 15 minutos ou menos ainda para cada um. E no final vou fazer um resumo da sessão com alguns comentários para o fecho e o que vai acontecer a seguir. Temos aqui os nossos peritos e vou passar a palavra ao Dr. John Gallagher, que vem de Trinity College, em Dublin, é, é, é professor, é, é assistente na a modelagem é, do ambiente e também está à frente do projeto Redone. O Dr. John Gallagher vai dar-nos um resumo sobre o projeto Redone, que está aqui alguma informação sobre o mesmo. Muito obrigado. Thank you, Helena. Um... Obrigado, Helena. Bom dia a todos. Bom dia. Obrigado por terem voltado hoje. Ontem, para quem cá esteve, nos diferentes comitês da WhatsApp, esta é uma parte essencial do que um dos comitês está a trabalhar. Vou entrar então na minha apresentação. Dê-me apenas uns segundos. Enquanto espero pela apresentação, o projeto Read Dawn é um projeto que foi iniciado em 2017 através de um consórcio de investigadores e pequenas e médias empresas, com vista a melhorar o potencial da recuperação de energia, utilizando aquilo a que chamamos uma bomba como turbina. O projeto tem um ano, portanto, e vai ter uma vida útil de três anos e vou descrever-vos brevemente o que prevemos fazer e o que é que concretizamos até agora. Read On, como todos os projetos europeus, é um acrónimo. Significa reduzir a dependência energética nas redes de água do espaço atlântico. É composto por 15 parceiros, cujos logótipos estão representados na parte de baixo do slide, universidades, pequenas e médias empresas, empresas de distribuição de água e também potenciais instaladores deste sistema na indústria. É composto por parceiros de cinco países diferentes e um dos objetivos essenciais consiste em demonstrar a tecnologia através de projetos pilotos. É uma parte muito essencial do que estamos a tentar fazer. Para quem não lida propriamente com redes de água, há muitas oportunidades de recuperação de energia e eu vou dar-vos dois exemplos muito rápidos dessas oportunidades. Um nas redes de abastecimento de água e outro nas redes de irrigação. Mas o nosso projeto também analisa fluxos de águas residuais, o consumo na indústria e o abastecimento de água na indústria também. Mas um, um exemplo de um projeto em redes de abastecimento de água que foi feito nesta uh, área foi algo em que estive envolvido há cinco anos, em que explorámos a Irlanda e o País de Gales como um exemplo de pequenas partes da União Europeia. Identificámos oito locais 
que tinha um potencial de recuperação de energia de 20 gigawatts por hora. Porque há muita pressão que está a ser dissipada nas redes de água e com isso temos o potencial de poupar 2,5 milhões de euros nesta pequena zona da Europa. É claro que há benefícios ambientais associados à recuperação dessa energia e isso equivale a cerca de 10 mil toneladas de dióxido de carbono por ano para as empresas de abastecimento de água. Não coloquei aqui o número, mas estes números equivalem a cerca de 2% da energia necessária no abastecimento de água e com o aumento dos preços de eletricidade e da água, as oportunidades para o setor da água de adotar esta tecnologia é algo muitíssimo atraente. No entanto, e vou entrar já nessa questão, há ainda muitas barreiras que temos de ultrapassar. As redes de irrigação são uma outra, um outro exemplo de oportunidades de recuperação de energia. Uma vez mais, fizemos este estudo em partes de Espanha e aqui em Portugal, com redes de rega, de redes de irrigação que estão sob pressão. E daquilo que identificamos nesta fase precoce do projeto, há oportunidades para termos 43 instalações destas turbinas, destas bombas como turbinas, que geram 1000 kW por ano. Uma vez mais, é energia que pura e simplesmente se perde se não se tiver em consideração a eficiência energética optimizada da rede. Então, o que pretendemos fazer, como parte deste protejo, é ir além destas bolsas da Irlanda, País de Gales, partes de Espanha e Portugal, replicando a forma como avaliamos a execuibilidade para examinarmos o potencial no espaço atlântico, a zona que é representada pelo nosso projeto, mas também para avaliar a Europa e muito além da Europa no futuro. Uma explicação muito breve de como funciona a microhidrogeração nas redes de água. Temos uma rede de transmissão de água e uma rede de distribuição de água. E aí, temos vários pontos onde há demasiada pressão. E nesses locais, normalmente, há válvulas que permitem libertar essa pressão. O que nós exploramos é a oportunidade de substituir essas válvulas por turbinas. Portanto, em vez de dissipar totalmente a energia, recuperamos parte dela. Porquê é que isto ainda não está a acontecer por todo o mundo? Podem perguntar. Parece bastante simples, de certa forma, mas a realidade é que há muitos obstáculos. O custo de forma de uma turbina. Realmente, ninguém tem assessado o mercado potencial em uma grande escala, além de um ou dois países, ou uma região dos países, em alguns casos. Há uma necessidade de política e regulações. regulations. There is a, a need to associate, uh, associate the environmental benefits and the social benefits uh, uh, that can be translated through economic savings and environmental savings. And for us, a key part of our project is a need for pilot projects to demonstrate the technology in action, to be a kind of final hurdle to persuade uh, practitioners, uh, technical, explain to technical um, experts how this technology can work, and to water companies. So the aim of the project is simply encapsulated in this, to foster the adoption of hydropower energy recovery technology in built water networks. We hope to address institutional, social and technological environment, um, environments. I'm from a civil engineering background, so really I feel more comfortable in the technological domain, if you will. But it's key, important, to this project to address the three different core areas. And I think our core dinner development fund and consists of parts of uh, the island of Ireland, the west coast of the UK, parts of France and the Iberian Peninsula. Look at the resources, what potential, uh, look at what type and look at what is the, um, to, but that's key to us having industry partners uh, water companies as part of our um, delivery of demonstration sites to, to assess this correctly. And so this pump as turbine essentially is a pump taken off a shelf and operated in reverse.
we had some of our, our team present so, some aspects of the project yesterday. I'm sure the presentations will be available to you at the end of the conference. But it provides a low cost alternative form by our academic uh, engineering partners. We, we also have key partners delivering uh, an understanding how water companies work throughout Europe, how governance works across Europe, and how we can implement this in different parts of, uh, of, of um, the EU. And obviously, we're delivering that message that it has environmental benefits, uh, both for customers and businesses. As I mentioned, our pilot demonstrations, which will be in operation over the coming 12 months, and for those of you who are interested in maybe specific sectors, whether it's irrigation, the process industry, or wastewater, wastewater, um, through the Read On website, you can keep track in our newsletter about how these are being clarified that has had a huge graph on the Republic about the tech uh, through developing the game uh, and to delivering a technology that has the potential to truly make the water net water supply. Apart from highest redes, okay, redes de sistemas de saneamento, uh, the presentation will be in Portuguese. Who wants to follow this presentation can catch the automatic translator, okay? The devices. Okay, Engenheiro Rui Silva Santos is the CEO of Redes e, e Sistemas de Saneamento. Uh, this is his own company. And Miguel Zilhão is a, a fellow from HST and a collaborator from this company. Okay, you can start. Yeah. Yeah, it's the computer. <laughs> Let's. We haven't recovered enough energy to have money to buy good enough computers. Good morning, everyone. Our presentation will be bilingual. I speak in Portuguese and Miguel has a lot of culture and intelligence that he'll be speaking in English, not me. Our presentation is on the part of induction and distribution of water grids in which we'll focus on the resolution of the hydraulic problem and then only see the opportunity of energy recovery so we will center on the possibility of after having solved the hydraulic part if we can recover that energy or not first just to uh, f frame this uh, as you all know and people from municipalities who deal with this uh, daily money is less and less it's more and more expensive water resources um, we have a problem of climate changes um, and by the looks of it humanity will live in and uh, planet more it is uh, in a problematic situation but some people don't believe so nevertheless um, we should uh, remove mr trump from this uh, scenario and we have a planet uh, that we must uh, take care of um, and uh, this that we're talking of uh, um, is part of this as problems solves a set of problems a problem regarding um, uh, leakage we have questions to system control, and Margarita de Pignon will be talking about that aspect later on. Management of our water. So, being we will no longer be crying, we will be happier, and we need to seek long term solutions that will work well. And to remind ourselves, as we see, we have no plan B regarding our planet. We only have this one, and it's through this one that we have to live with. 
This is a, a big, um, long sentence uh, made by two philosophers, the two of us, as you could easily deduce. So one of these sentences I think are important. This one, we can only uh, build a long-term, uh, we cannot build a long-term future if we think in the short term. Regarding uh, leakage in Portugal, the average uh, amount is about 30%. In other words, 30% of the water coming out of our reservoirs is not charged. So we're talking about commercial losses. The greatest component is real and physical component, which is in red over here, in which and on which we'll be focusing because that is where we have uh, the main water problem. We have a multiplicity of uh, hydraulic uh, uh, errors and situations that all of us, uh, mainly the people from municipalities, know very well. And we need to solve this urgently. In terms uh, of uh, the hydraulic balance, uh, what we are focusing on is real losses, in other words, leakages. And by solving that problem, we will solve um, in one batch we will decrease our leakages, we will decrease the uncharged water, we have a more efficient use of energy, and we will have an energy recovery. And once again, one of these things, these statistics of 30%, let me call your attention to the fact that we have several statistical indices to represent a, a specific problem. The question is, uh, by making this statistics, uh, it means that uh, the places with a higher consumption have percentages that are lower, because they have higher consumption, so this comes into the global uh, pie. So statistics can be fallible, we have to see this case by case with the lower consumption as well. It's always harmed in these statistics, and as we see up here, statistics are like bikinis. They show a lot, but not everything. So we need to be careful when we use statistics. The four large components of real losses are uh, pressure management, in which um, in a, a specific grid um, uh, uh, by uh, decreasing pressure then real uh, uh, losses uh, decrease uh, linearly we need to prevent this in um, the grid control we have to know what we have and the speed with which we detect and uh, repair our the possibility or not of energy recovery in other words if possible yes no problem. If it's not economically uh, feasible, let's take a look at something else. And as we'll see over here, we have several technologies, two of which will be presented right after. So, we have to overcome these uh, barriers that we've uh, heard uh, previously to be able to have a better future. We have a whole set of barriers in the technical, uh, uh, technical economic, etc. In the technical part, usually we have two big problems. Uh, which is the question of the information that is available and human resources to be able to solve the problems. With each in one of them, we also have a whole set of problems. Uh, for example, in, uh, in uh, the municipalities, we have uh, questions related to staff um, of not having availability. Each person has to resort to uh, uh, several fields and the information that is available is usually scarce, we need to look for it, etc., uh, etc. Et Here in Portugal, we have an additional problem of um, um, fatalism. Uh, uh, it's always so it's been like this, it will always be like this, it'll never change. Yesterday, you had uh, a, session, a session with suits, but you didn't see a, a verse with father uh, songs, but being fatalist. Um, um, only in death and taxes, as our friend Benjamin says. So in this area, it, uh, it's no use uh, uh, being a fatalist. We need to move on. Here, in this presentation, we are focusing on uh, these two sides of this equation of water. In other words, in other words, uh, uh, the transmission uh, that we will use as a supply over here and, and distribution. In our daily work, we find a whole set of problems in which we have to have reservoir control in uh, situations of uh, uh, transmission or managing pressures in a grid. Um, um, we need to, to change the functions. We have to solve the hydraulic problem. 
uh, in Cascais, in which I was, uh, it was our friend Pedro over there, that we did in San Juan de Estoril, an area in which we lowered the pressure from 5.5 to 4. What happened was, as we see over here, the flow at night uh, uh, decreased substantially to about half, so leakages also went to about half. Uh, um, uh, leakages here in blue also decreased at the time uh, and the data that uh, our friend Pedro Pedregon uh, gave us were at zero at the time. I don't know what happened. He doesn't know either because he changed jobs. An example that we are working on at the moment uh, is with the municipality of Santa Cruz. We have engineer Gustav, the head engineer of, uh, of that municipality, in which we have reservoirs uh, from 1,111 up to zero because we've reached the sea. So we have a great potential here. Just a small example here in this area. And not all reservoirs from the municipality itself, uh, but in which we have a superior reservoir that uh, supplies two inferior ones, in which uh, the dark blue one can only be supplied when the uh, uh, lower level reservoir is full. In other words, we have the possibility of solving the problem with a uh, control, uh, control upstream of the intermediate reservoir to supply both of them and simultaneously being able to recover that energy. In other words, place a good hydraulic functioning and then after that we can uh, recover energy. In the same municipality, we studied a pilot area in which after after all medulation, etc., in the existing uh, situation, there were very few levels uh, of pressure in red, the main uh, level of uh, a reservoir at uh, 180 uh, level, almost up to sea level. So we have an enormous uh, energy potential. By changing the system, we divided this into uh, um, energy levels. So we also have a potential of energy recovery. But the focus is solving the hydraulic problem, and then we can or not recover energy. So we need to take advantage uh, of these opportunities uh, to be able to solve the problem and simultaneously, uh, in inverted commas, uh, make money with it, uh, with that energy recovery. Um, I'm going to pass to Miguel, who will show that we are bilingual. Good morning, everyone. Um, as engineer Rui said, the main focus must be to fix the hydraulic problems within the, the water network. Only then should we assess the feasibility of energy recovery. In order to do that, we need to know where, how, and to do an analysis, a study of the potential of the energy recovery. So where we have uh, this, this can, technology can be implemented as it was referred in water distribution systems or water supply systems or water transmissions. Uh, of course, the first one, you have more restrictions, uh, such as pressure restriction, where you have to ensure the quality for the consumers. You have uh, the total consumption is divided by the network, um, and you have var variation variables, such as consumer demand, that increase the complexity within the system. In the water supply system, however, uh, you have less pressure restrictions, and you can terminate all of the flow of the consumption, and you actually would require a, a pressure control so uh, with a control valve, uh, which Margarita can explain better, uh, and, or why not a micro idle power technology. So first we need to set goals in order to achieve uh, our reality and, and to try to implement this technology. But how can we do that? In water distribution systems, for example, you have two regulation modes. The first one, a non-regulation mode, where you would require the flow meter and a bypass with a full control valve in order to ensure the minimum pressure in the network. And you would have to have in downstream a pressure reduction valve to ensure that the maximum pressure within the network is not exceeded. Uh, in this regulation mode, you would use the nominal speed uh, of the machine. Whereas in the electric regulation mode, you would have a variable speed drive uh, that, allowed you, that would allow you to fix an optimal rotational speed or to use a variable rotational speed according to the input flow rate within the machine uh, in order to harness more energy. In a water supply system, since the flow is constant or uh, zero, you wouldn't require that many equipments, uh, but you could still use both regulation modes, where in the electrical one, it would be uh, more optimal to use a fixed rotational speed. In order to, 
and again, it's important, as Doctor said, to uh, try to combine engineering with science and all these uh, disciplines. Um, in order to uh, to explain you how important is this analysis, um, I'll give you an example in Madeira, in the municipality of Funchal. We did a, a study there in the, uh, a, study, a pilot zone, where uh, in order to fix the grid, we had to implement uh, 50 pressure reduction valves. And out of these 50, uh, only 10 of them had the estimated potential to actually harness good amount of energy. And after some detailed study, only two to three of them actually had a good payback period. So we need to study this first. As you can see in this graph, these show the four PRV location sites that would produce the most energy out of these 10 PRVs. You can see that actually only two to three of them would intersect the initial investment um, and to have good period, uh, payback periods. But it's important to um, highlight again that to fix the hydraulic grid, we need to in install um, more uh, pressure with less involved. So it makes sense to compare the cost with the differential uh, cost between implementing a total uh, micro hydro power technology uh, its, and its costs, or the difference between it and uh, to install pressure reduction equipment and all its accessories. And that means that we are uh, talking about more or less fi uh, fif uh, 15,000 euros, uh, well, aft of the price. So zooming in in a five year period, the, the analysis that was carried out before was for a 15 year period, since it, w it is the time that is required more or less to uh, decrease the water losses to 15%. Uh, and zooming in in a five year period, you can see that the, the investment, okay, uh, the payback period would be in this latter scenario, two years, and um, with the initial cost, four years. Um, in a water supply system, however, we also did an, uh, a study in the same uh, reservoir, but this time upstream, uh, because it's a water transmission system, um, and in this schematic drawing, in this schematic drawing, you can see if we didn't have any regulation control, the piezometric line would be the red one. So we actually required a control valve or um, a, a micro hydro power technology device uh, in this, uh, for this purpose. So um, we tried to, we did a study and to, to try to optimize the equation flow times uh, head and we got to the conclusion that the optimal head in this scenario would be two thirds of the different level between the upstream reservoir and the downstream reservoir. These following graphs show this uh, correlation. So comparing the energy recovery between these, uh, these systems, the water distribution and water transmission, you can see that uh, there's a huge gap here, of course, because it's, it's more complex to, to install this technology in water distribution system Thus, it's important to first analyze it and to study it, but first to fix the, the, the hydraulic uh, problems within the grid, as the, the, this sentence illustrates. In order to show you how did we got to these results, um, we in, in RSS we developed uh, a software called uh, Sherlock. Sher Sherlock stands by uh, stands for a uh, selector of micro hydro power technology and its regulation, lowering the operational costs. And this software allows us to, as you can see in the picture, to choose, and this example is for a pump turbine, um, to choose different micro hydro power technologies uh, and its uh, rotational speeds, and then get the, the result of energy. In non-regulation mode, you would fix, you would use the nominal speed, so the uh, results would be limited, but you can compare with the electrical regulation mode and, to and this software allows us to study all of the rotational speeds and then to fix the optimal one in order to harness more energy and then compare it also with the variable um, rotational speed within the electrical regulation mode. And you can see that this, uh, this last one is the one that produces the most energy um, and this is for the example of the one of the PRV location presented before that had the most potential. So the important uh, here, the important uh, to conclude, it's to, to never guess, um, because you, you need to first have a study, uh, as our, uh, because our Sherlock never guesses, so you have first to do this study and then 
carry on to study the feasibility of energy recovery within this technology. Só para terminar em português. Just to finish off in Portuguese. We tried in our presentation to give you a global framework of the problems um, and uh, always highlight uh, that uh, the first step is to solve the hydraulic problem and see what we can recover, to see what we can uh, recover, uh, develop softwares, uh, software for that uh, goal with the previous experience, everything ended up, we're trying to evolve in the sense uh, we do not need here. Each person working in their own uh, field, this has to be a global effort. Uh, we don't want uh, dormant brains, we need the capacity to move on. We don't need to have uh, previous uh, uh, thoughts like the earth is flat, etc. We don't need to be prima donnas of knowledge. I need to do something when I have everything. So I'm going to wait that everything comes down to me. No, we need to move on. In reality, what we need uh, is to solve um, the hydraulic problems um, with teams that are multidisciplinary, with open minds to transformation and evolution. And we always need to study to see if it's worthwhile to have this energy recovery. We cannot go into wishful thinking and think that we have an iPhone with this. No, we need to study the case uh, to see if it's worth it. Uh, it. To see if it's worth it, not only in terms of water efficiency, but also the, in recovery of money. But we need to make a bit of propaganda and see some guys with nice faces in the newspapers, etc. So in reality, we need to know, analyze, project, decide, and mainly act. We cannot always think about it. Because in reality, to solve our problems, uh, we cannot continue thinking always the same way. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rui and Miguel. An excellent presentation. We, uh, you helped us open our eyes to this problem. And now, the following presentation will be made by Nuno Leixo, who has more than 20 years of experience at KSB. He has done several training sessions in Portugal and Germany. He is the head of, uh, at KSB of this topic. Uh, energy production, pumps as turbines, how to use them in water systems, and that's it for the time being. The presentation in English, let's see how it runs. Um, so I'm responsible for uh, water and wastewater applications in KSP Portugal, and we have seen for the um, last few years that uh, there is a lot of potential to recover energy in water systems, irrigation, and uh, also in wastewater systems. We can see in this picture, in what water works, we have a lot of uh, pipe works, uh, water running down uh, in rivers and so on, and there is a lot of potential to recover energy. Sometimes it is difficult to do the investment because the investment can be uh, very expensive and even technical technically a bit difficult. So when we see for municipalities, sometimes they have just a small flow running on pipes, sometimes running from mountains to the water treatment plants, and uh, sometimes they use also uh, re reduction uh, pressure valves to, to cut the pressure on the entrance of the, of the um, uh, treatment plant. And this pressure means energy and could be recovered to produce electrical energy, uh, for instance, or mechanical energy to be used for pumping water, for instance. And uh, since KSP is a producer of, or manufacturer of pumps since long time ago, uh, KSP developed a study to check and to test their pumps working as a turbine. Because uh, there are some advantages to use the pump as turbine. Uh, let's focus first on a turbine. The turbine, it was developed exactly to work to recover energy from water. And uh, the, um, the turbine is wide in range control. You can use a turbine in several range of flow, for instance, with high efficiency. You can use the turbine with accurate design. The, the turbine is designed to work with the, for that system. 
and uh, with higher efficiencies. However, if you, cannot, if you have a low flow, uh, short flow, and uh, the turbine is too expensive, you can use a, a pump as a turbine. The pump is a standard pump, a standard product. Uh, for instance, this kind of pumps, uh, KSP produce thousands per year. So it's a standard product uh, with short delivery time, uh, low price, of course, and you can use also the pump as a pump. We can see so, uh, two graphics. Uh, on the right side, you have a, a graphic of uh, efficiency curve of the uh, turbine, and you see that the turbine keeps high level of efficiency uh, near uh, as far you go in a complete uh, range of operation with a, let's say, wide range of operation. The pump uh, working as a turbine, usually you can all, uh, only find the best efficiency point in a certain uh, small range of uh, flow. So that's why the pump is not so flexible as the turbine. However, if you see that you have a potential to recover some energy in a system, and uh, the turbine is too expensive, you should also calculate the cost and the payback using a pump as a turbine. Maybe, and uh, probably, you will not recover so much energy, but at least we, you will recover some energy, and the payback could be shorter than using a turbine. Especially for uh, small systems, systems with a small flow, and uh, there's a lot of potential to use a pump as a turbine. Here you can see the operating range of the three pumps, the three type series pumps from KSB that could be used as a turbine. Uh, we have multi-stage pump for higher pressures, uh, but uh, small uh, flow. We have single entry uh, pumps and double entry impeller pumps for bigger flows. You can see that we can reach power power until 750 kilowatt with the capacity more or less until 2,000 cubic meters, uh, liters per second. So you have a wide range of application for a pump as a turbine. We see some pictures of installations where we placed some pumps working as a turbine. And in this picture, we can see a pump. This is a a drawing of a pump where we can see with the, um, the, the red uh, arrows the, working, the machine working as a pump and with the green arrows we see the machine working as a turbine. So it is exactly the same machine, a standard machine, usually much cheaper than a turbine that can be used as a, as a turbine. You see, when the, the pump works as a pump the inflow, it is, act, it is on the horizontal uh, direction, but when it works as a turbine, everything works in the opposite way. We have the, the water coming in from top, the rotation uh, is on the opposite direction, it is, the shaft is connected to a motor working as a generator or even a generator, and uh, could be another machine, a rotating machine, on the, on the other part of the shaft. And so this is as simple as it looks. We can see here the performance curves or the characteristic curves, flow and pressure of a, on the right side of a, a pump working as a pump and on the left side of the same machine or similar machine working as a turbine. We can see from the curve of the pump working as a turbine that the range, operating range, is not so big as it, it is usual uh, for a turbine. However, uh, with some adjustments on the system, it is possible to control the flow and the pressure to work with the pump as turbine uh, for the indic indicated uh, duty point. We also can see that for a pump working as a turbine, usually the flow uh, for the best efficiency point is a bit higher than the flow for a pump working as a pump, and also the, the pressure is a little bit higher than the pressure for a pump working as a pump. 
we can see uh, this picture shows uh, Powerhouse. It was a, a, a development made by KSB to be used in some places where there is no electric grid. And uh, it is a standard container with all, is the kind of the black box with the pump working as a turbine. Everything that is needed to, to have a pump working as a turbine, like the, all the pipes, the valves, the, the, ener the um, energy correctors, and the uh, variable speed um, equipment, and so on. Everything is inside that box. And uh, it is calculated according to the pressure and to the flow available in, in the place. And this energy can be used for uh, electric grid, a small electric grid can be used to, to pump water for another place, something like that. So it, it is, a, a, we can see in this picture, inside the container, all the equipment inside, the pump has turbine, the transformer, the frequency inverter, the um, valves, uh, voltage filter, and all the pipe work inside the, the same container. So this is an easy way to, to have a pump as a turbine. Of course, it's not the solution to be, a, uh, to be used by, um, here in Portugal by a municipality, because this, is, this was developed to send it to the jungle, to some places uh, far from everything where there is no electric grid. Uh, but here in Portugal, or in, for municipalities, for water supply companies, this system can be used and made by companies like the company we saw before, where they can do the study for the, the perfect solution for energy recovery, and uh, with a pump as turbine, they can build all the system around the, to have the, the system working for energy recovering. For curiosi cu curiosity, we have here uh, an example of a system that it, it was developed in uh, Java Island in uh, Indonesia, uh, in, the, in some place where there was no electrical uh, energy. It was the need for water supply, and there was a um, underground river running with a very high flow, but it was about uh, 100, 100, 200 meters below the, the soil. So uh, KSP was a partner in this project, and they made with using three main pumps working as turbine, connected directly via um, a gear box to some pumps. The pumps working as turbine, the rotation was transmitting rotation to the small pumps, and those small pumps could um, pump the water to the surface. We can see here, it's easier to understand. So we see a big pump. And the, in the, um, this pump was working as a turbine. The rotation of that pump connected to a gearbox was commanding the smaller pump that was pumping water to the surface. Of course, we had a much, for the pump working as a turbine, we had a capacity of 370 liters per second and a head of uh, 15 meters with a efficiency, hydraulic efficiency of uh, about 81%. The small pumps to pump water to the surface for water supply, it was a multi-stage pump, pumping each pump only um, 16 liters per second for a head of 190 meters with efficiency, hydraulic efficiency of 75%. So it's an, a, a nice example how to use a pump as a turbine. In this case, the, uh, the, the turbine was not producing energy, they were transmitting the energy directly to the other pump to pump the water. Of course, there is always the need of some energy, and that's why in, the, in this picture you can see some small, uh, a, a small pump. This pump was just producing enough energy to control the system for the automation and so on. And so this is a very nice example how a pump can be used as a turbine. For water uh, supply systems, uh, for, um, usually uh, people, uh, we have a lot of people curious about this uh, solution, 
and sometimes people just uh, think about, they made some calculations, think with the, they consider a very high efficiency, they consider the using of all capacity of the pipes, all the pressure, and uh, sometimes they are very optimistic about the, the payback of the, um, of the investment. Then they start to ask to, to KSB, for instance, about uh, how it is a pump working gas turbine. As I told you, if you, if you, go, uh, you go out of the range of the best efficiency point of the pump gas turbine, the efficiency comes, uh, drops a lot. And uh, usually you have to use the pump for a certain uh, capacity or flow and a certain pressure. And so the people start to do some calculations and they see, well, they feed, I cannot recover as much efficiency I was thinking about. And sometimes people je just give up of the, the project or the, because they were thinking about recovering like, um, efficiency with a 90 or 80 percent efficiency and that is not uh, possible with the pump gas turbine because the most of the time you cannot use all the flow however as i, I said at the, when i was starting calculations must be done and the payback could be very interesting if you compare with investment with the turbine because sometimes the investment with the turbine is very expensive and you also have to think that it is better to recover some energy from a system than lose all the energy that is available on the system. There is another problem sometimes um, people from the water companies, they are afraid to compromise the, um, their, main, uh, their main task, task because they, they want to, to supply water, drinking water, and they are afraid to put some system in the middle of, the, of the, their system and to compromise the, the main task. And if you see, all the, the um, recovering system can be done with a bypass. So in case of any problem with the machines with the recovering system, you can just close the valves and the main, main system is always working. So it's not the problem uh, for the water supply system or for irrigation system. From my, so? Thank you very much. Muito obrigada por ter cumprido o tempo e, portanto, temos uma perspectiva de poder utilizar as bombas a funcionar como turbinas. Segue-se o engenheiro Pedro Perdigão. Okay. Uh, Perdigão. Professor from Hintaqua. Okay, and uh, obtained the civil engineering uh, degree in 96, and uh, later in 2005, uh, um, he gets the, the MBA in Oporto Business School. Now he is member of the board of Indaqua, a company integrated in MIA Group. I think it's the name. Yes, correct me, yes. okay, me group that holds concessions and participations of water utilities that serves 630,000 consumers. I'm sure Miguel will solve that problem. Uh, 
I apologize for this delay, but it's an interesting time to start reflecting on what we've been listening to and uh, what has been transmitted. We need to open up this window of opportunity. We have many in the water sector, not only in terms of water supply, but also for populations and irrigation systems in the industrial part. Obviously, depending on the topography and characteristics of the systems, we have greater or fewer opportunities uh, to implement those solutions in terms of Madeira, for example, which has very high differences in level with problems of excess pressure in a large part of the circuit. This is a solution that we need to think about. Um, I just have this slide to let you know where I'm coming from. It's better for you to understand the example that I'm going to speak later. So I work in Indaqua. Indaqua is a Portuguese company owned by MIA, which is an international company that has contracts on uh, non-revenue water projects, on efficiency uh, in Bahamas, in Brazil, and also in, in, in America and in, in Spain. Okay? So what, what am I going to do is I'm going to we heard a lot about the word smart these days. So everything is smarter since we have a smartphone. But are we smarter because we have a smartphone? I don't know. And smarter is something that we can get. Intelligenter? No. So intelligent is a characteristic we have. Smarter is ability. It's something that we can develop. So I'll be talking about smart water utilities, which are kind of a person, uh, and looking at it in the non-revenue water perspective, because it's an area where it involves, involves many departments of the company, so it's a, a good area to create a general motivation and to induce uh, improvement uh, uh, philosophy, okay? So, starting about something that is very important whenever you want to change its motivation, okay? Uh, so. What does it motivate companies to reduce non-revenue water? In my opinion, it's the economy stupid. It's the phrase that one of the advisors of uh, Bill Clinton, sorry, that one of the advisors of Bill Clinton told him when he was deciding in which areas should he direct his campaign. So the idea is that people are motivated by economy. Believing that, which, what makes water utilities more motivated to reduce non-revenue water. On the, la on the right, you have the high, on the left, the lower motivation. The first one is, are the, consuming, the consumers paying for water losses? In many cases, it's a public entity, all the costs go to the tariffs or to the taxes, so the water losses doesn't have any impact on the company. It's all going to the consumer. In other cases, some companies earn some or lose some if they don't achieve an amount of non-revenue water. So if you are, if the company, if the water utility is partially assuming the cost of non-revenue water, it, the company will be more motivated. A different thing is where is the water coming? If it's a vertical system uh, where you take out the water you treat it, it doesn't have such a high economic value than when you're buying the water from a different company. So, whenever you import water from a bulk water supplier, you're probably to be more motivated to reduce non-revenue water. In some cases, those contracts have minimum consumption. And I've been in water utilities that had gone down by reducing water losses below the minimum consumption. So they were supposed to gain nothing and still pay for minimum consumption. So minimum consumption can be a motivator or non-motivator for reducing water losses. And a different thing is the high water price. So I think that water has more value than just the cost of bringing it to our homes. And the scarcity and the tendency that we're seeing should increase the value of water. So if you have higher cost of water, you have more motivated water utilities. Speaking a little bit more about this. Then, how can you motivate a company? An idea is measure. You cannot manage if you don't measure, but you should measure with KPIs that people understand. So Rui was talking that percentage is not a good performance indicator for non-revenue water, and I agree with him. So I put here six different uh, measures 
for uh, efficiency in a water utility, and they're all very confused. Efficiency is so, uh, the percentage is so good that even journalists understand it. But it's, it's bad to compare companies, okay? So, for instance, why not use a, an easy indicator in the water utility that is the cost of non-revenue water? If you put that in the PNL, I'm sure that it will probably become a more urgent matter. So, measure and use KPIs that people understand. Another thing very important is monitor. Monitor things, monitor hourly, monitor daily, monthly, yearly, depends, but monitor, measure, and benchmark. For instance, in Indaqua, we have six companies, that's IFAF, Santutis, and all that, and they all measure monthly on the performance indicator that we are using for non-revenue water, which is non-revenue water per kilometer of network. So monitor, put red lights, show that things are different. No one is, it's not everyone having the same results. About benchmarking, and about the percentage is a good example, uh, you have to do it right. Not just using the right indicators, but also use a good source of data when you're comparing to others. In Portugal, our regulator has a very good source of data. There's another one called IBNet, but it's voluntarily, it's not audited, but it's worldwide. But you can have good benchmarking just using the data that our regulator puts for free, it's, it's public. So please make sure that you're not a little bit wrong with the image that you have of yourself. So, what the, what's the place of non-revenue water in the strategy? First of all, why, sh why sh should it be a goal? And you, you need to answer, for every goal you have, you need to answer why. So you go to your competences your, your, and to the environment, a SWOT analysis, very typical, and if you can combine a strength with an opportunity or a weakness uh, with a, a threat, then you should have this non-revenue water. Maybe it doesn't need to be in the strategy map of the company, but you have to answer why. And why is very important for motivation. Then there are tools like Balanced Scorecard where you place in the, in the map your goals, organize them, and it's a good tool to explain to people what's your strategy. And that's the place of non-revenue water in the global map of goals, in the strategy map of Indaqua. But I like it because it interacts with many areas. For instance, we have water network renewal, or we have uh, reduced service interruptions, or reduced uh, bursts, and all that is related to non-revenue water. Remember that reducing bursts saves costs and increases revenues because people have water available, so they'll use it. Uh, then, if you answer the, the question why, and it's a goal for the utility to reduce non-revenue water, then answer the question how. Things don't happen by chance, you need to have a plan, okay? And this is just an example of the measurement that we do uh, and some example of the goals. You see every month they are rated and according to the deviation of the real value to the prediction, they are graded. We use the Portuguese classification in, in, the, in the school that goes from 0 to 20 because I find it more motivating. Uh, so what's the difference between intelligent and smart? So I think water utilities are a little bit like whales. They're so big, they're so protected, they don't have to be smart. So they are thinking and they have a huge large of thinking and analyzing ability and sorry to say it, as Rui was saying, they waste a lot of time. I say waste, I was a lot of time just thinking about it. And I think they need to become smarter. And this is a smart animal. And why is it smart? Because he has good sensors, his ears, his eyes, his nose. He's very rapid thinking, and then he has the muscle on his back legs to jump and get out of there because the wolf is coming. So he needs to be smart, and he can get smarter. So if you want to get smarter, you have to have all these dimensions, okay? Sensor. Water utilities have been investing a lot in sensors, placing uh, flow and pressure and all of that. But then someone was saying in the morning, that means big data. So you have to 
filter, to synthesize, to change, to transform data into information, and then you, you need to have analytical capacity. You need to have rapid thinking and, this, and, and, and decision. And of course, you need to have the resources and you need to have the rapid. You need to be fast, so you need to have timely actions. So that's why we call it smart. You don't need to stop being intelligent because that's something that you cannot. That's a characteristic. It doesn't evolve. It is born with you, so you can st still be intelligent and you should be. You should un understand the concepts, but I think that water utilities need to be smarter. Okay, so let me give an example of Indaqua. So this is using our regulator performance indicators. This is uh, the comparison in percentage of the, the private operators in the country. There's some public in the, ba in the down, for instance, Lisbon or Porto, and they're the best in the public sector, but the private sector is much better than the public sector. So we compare ourselves with the other privates and the blue lines are all in Daqua companies. And we see that just one is, is down here and all of them in percentage are on the top. But when you change the analyze, the, the, the indicator, leaving the percentage and using non-revenue water per kilometers or per service connection, it all changes. Some of them become down, okay? For instance, even uh, Lisbon, that is, has a 10.5% non-revenue water, so it's much lower than the national average that is of 30, on non-revenue water per kilometer becomes with 7,000, while the national average is 2,400, so Lisbon is three times worse than the national average. So we did this analyze and we thought, well, some of them, you see, are on the top, on the three indicators, so we believe that some of them are very good. But what happened was that Indaqua had gone down from non-revenue water, that's non-revenue water per kilometer, until the year 2013, and for several years was stable. We had, for instance, an ILI, an infrastructure leakage in index, lower than one, and uh, our, our part meter error is estimated in 2.5%, so we take samples and do analysis, so what could we do? Uh, first we did was, let's see if we are looking to the right variables, to the, the key variables. And we were using an automatic system, we decided, it was like, stop thinking, let's send data to that machine and she will tell you when there's a leak, send people to search for it. And we are not understanding the process. So we went back a little bit and we decided, let's see if we can put it on a human uh, size so that people really know the MAs, know them by heart. It's not just having faith on, on a monitor. So we did that. And we did another thing that we also talked about. We worked on the speed and quality of repairs and on the speed of the leak detection. People forget, but it's, we can do it, a leak detection, in many different ways, with many different supports, with good management, with good incentives, so we changed all that. So what happened is, you see the blue line, is the percentage of our network that we search per year. And we went from 100 to near 300%. So we are searching three times the length of the network and multiplied by three. And the black, is the number of leaks that we detected and repair. So it also increased. Nowadays, what is happening is the number of leaks has stopped growing and uh, we're still growing on the percentage of search. So maybe we've reached a point where we should stop putting more effort in searching for leaks. I, I'm just finishing. So going back to that smart thing that I was talking about, I think that INDAC will become smarter with the work we've done. And what we did was we worked on the key variables, okay? We also work on the resources. We improve our efficiency and effectiveness of our team. So we, we start finding leaks sooner because I don't believe that we are producing leaks. We're just finding it sooner. That number must go down sometime, okay? So that's it. Obrigado. Thank you, Pedro. He's uh, engineering José Saldanha from um, Sangoban, Pontamusson, Portugal. He's director. He obtains the bachelor in, at the University of Coimbra 
and the master degree as a mechanical engineering. Um, since uh, 2008, uh, he's chairman of the Portuguese National Mirror Committee for elements of piping, tubes, valves, and accessories. Uh, Good morning. I apologize, but I'm going to make my presentation in Portuguese. First, I would like to tell you a little bit about micro turbines because this is a project that we started around two years ago with a European partner. So we developed this project together with the European partner based on three fundamental ideas. One of them was the fact that we have been hearing for a long time about renewable energy. We wanted to combine that with innovation in order to find a truly innovative solution for the market and an accessible, affordable solution with an excellent uh, revenue that could become attractive and with a service life of at least 25 years and which could also be eligible in the case of our country and of other European countries to be eligible for European funds. So the idea was to use the energy available in water supply systems but there was also an idea in our mind to allow, in some systems, especially irrigation systems, which usually are in areas of difficult access and where the electricity grid does, does not exist, we were constantly asked to try and get energy so that we could supply the uh, tools, but also to, so that we could communicate those data to the managers of the systems. Besides that, there was also a need to develop the project with an interesting payback period so that it could be motivating, because today the economy masters our whole life. So as I said before, we wanted to have a tool allowing us to supply energy in remote places, something easy to install, so not a complex device, a very simple thing. And so we had to think about the following. We all know that most water supply networks and water distribution networks use pressure reducing valves to create a head loss, to stabilize the pressure downstream, to maintain the pressure at a constant value. And by doing that, we are wasting energy. We all know this principle. We have an upstream pressure that we want to reduce. And with such a valve, with a control valve, we are wasting energy. And often this energy or this type of equipment is not working under the best hydraulic conditions or are not working within the hydraulic parameters for which they were designed. So this is the situation you can see over here. We want a head loss, but there's always the risk of cavitation. And that reduces the service life of the equipment. So. We thought of going to the same places and imagining the following. We are wasting energy here, so we have to implement a solution, and this is nothing new. There have been plenty of situations that have been studied uh, like this. We will place a micro turbine together with those 
valves. We will try and reduce the head loss, the delta P that the valves had before, so that we can take a little bit uh, more energy. We can recover a little bit more energy by using the micro turbines. So this was the principle underlying the project. The equipment itself is very simple. It has a flanged tube in carbon steel, conventional carbon steel. It has single stage or multi-stage turbines with several diffusers and rotors. And what you can see uh, there in the cross section, well, I cannot point, but on the back you can see the turbines at the entrance of the steel tube, of the steel pipe. There is a mechanism making the connection between the turbines and the generator. The generator is inserted in this steel pipe. Water the water from the system, drinking water or water supply systems water flows on the outside and helps cool the generator. It's a shielded generation, generator and there was also another assumption that we needed to make sure about. We know that in water supply systems there is a high risk in some boxes or chambers or confined areas, there's always the risk of flooding. And so we also had that in our minds. How could we insert micro turbines in facilities that had the risk of flooding? And so while developing this solution, we had to make it watertight. So if a flood occurred, we had to make sure that the equipment would continue operating in normal conditions and without any kind of risk. From that moment onwards, we also tried to see the gain range of diameters and the flow rates so that we could develop the prototypes. That's how we reached a uh, range from DN50 to DN600 with nominal flow rates from 5 liters per second up to 600 liters per second per piece. And in this graph you can see the yield and the flow rate and With an established delta P, we are able to have the to to see the total yield, hydraulic and electric. On the left hand side, you you can see a graph that you know with uh, the flow and. Uh, the pressure and you can see the difference in height that we have in order to be able to operate with a turbine and then we have uh, the traditional uh, systems with traditional turbines. When we developed the project we thought that usually traditional turbines discharge to the atmosphere. There is energy available and so it allows us to produce energy and the pressure at the outlet is usually the air pressure. In the case of uh, other equipment, like the one from KSV, they can have higher pressures, much higher pressures. And we wanted to know our place in this graph and we reached the conclusion that micro turbines had to work with a minimum delta p of 15 meters and per piece and we made the trials and when i say delta p is the difference between the entry and output the input and output pressure it, the minimum had to be 15 meters and the maximum uh, 215 minute, meters head. And so we thought that there was an opportunity. There are systems like the one in Madeira where they have 
huge differences in height where you need to move from 40 bars to one bar or two. And so we thought that we needed to have a flow rate, but we also needed a device able to operate at very high pressure. So what we decided to do, and in the graph you can see that up to 0.5 cubic meters per second, it's one piece. And if we have a flow rate which is higher than that, we can associate some micro turbines in parallel. So if we have delta P's within those that range, okay, but if we have a higher flow rate, we associate micro turbines in parallel. If we have a case like the one of Madeira Island with significant flow rates and also high pressures, we can associate um, micro turbines in series and in parallel. So we can have a mixed model with two parallel micro turbines together with the control valves and two micro turbines in series. So our idea was to address this project to water, um, drinking water supply systems, uh, raw water for irrigation, treated water, so waste water after being treated. This was also one of our goals. And now we are performing tests with seawater. On the right-hand side, you can see a graph showing you the total efficiency after 100 liters per second in a micro turbine of 30 kilowatts, we can reach an efficiency of 69%, a total efficiency of 69%. Uh, 100 kilowatt micro turbines can reach 72% efficiency for flow rates of around 250 liters per second. So this is one of the examples. Where can we apply this type of equipment? Traditional installations. On your left-hand side, you have the project, the, the diagram of a dam, where you have a pipe uh, ensuring the ecological compulsory flow. It is compulsory by law. We cannot escape it. And therefore, we have there a source of constant energy, because the flow rate is almost always constant with very slight variations and so we have the right place the optimum place to install a micro turbine which will be operating for several hours for most of the year i'm sure then we have traditional water supply facilities with two reservoirs and a control valve at the arrival of uh, the end uh, reservoir to control the pressure or the level. So this is a typical installation. And then pressure reducing uh, valve uh, chambers is another possibility for the installation. This is the typical diagram of uh, pressure reducing valve chamber. The blue is the existing installation, and in red and pink, it's the part that we can build, sometimes without requiring civil construction work. And we can do the bypass and install a micro turbine. Many could say, but why do you have the, that ACV valve there. What is it doing there? It is ensuring the 15 meters uh, height. So at least at between the entrance and the exit of the turbine, I need to have 15 minute, meters. In a water supply system, I have to ensure that water column. That's why I cannot have a direct thing. I have to have a pressure difference between the 
inlet and the outlet. I can have more than 15, but the minimum is 15. Another type of facility, of another type of installation, if I have enough pressure and flow rate, I can have parallel micro turbines. To wrap up my presentation, this is a financial table that we drafted based on 7,000 7, hours of our working time. This means more or less 290 days. And we can see the different powers from 10 kilowatts to 300 kilowatts. We can see the installation costs, the maintenance costs. You can see the amount of energy recovered. For example, a 300 kilowatt unit produces 2.1 million kilowatts per hour. So you can now calculate the EBITDA, which after one year, it's 108,000 euros. And therefore, the payback will be in eight years. These are just a few examples to show you the return period that you can have in each case. Thank you. Let's go to our last presentation. The speaker is engineering Margarida Pinhão. She comes from Technilab, Portugal. Uh, he's uh, uh, mechanical engineering from IST, Technic Lisboa, has the specialization in applied thermodynamics. He's working since uh, 2004 in Technilab and uh, he's responsible for Flucon, uh, typical from valves. He's member of specialized commission of water distribution systems. Uh, of APDA, okay, and uh, uh, she is representative uh, in this uh, association of uh, urban water systems. Uh, water systems, so. okay. yes. <laughs> Distribution of water systems. Okay. Um, I'm. I have a billing <laughs> presentation, but I, appealing to my uh, synthesis capacity, I will speak in Portuguese. <laughs> so. Um, eu sou I am responsible for uh, control uh, valves and what I'm going to do in this uh, short presentation will be the bridge between what my colleagues mentioned previously regarding um, the energy um, um, reuse and the use of control valves and uh, the likely energy recovery to increase and improve the efficiency of water supply systems. I'm not uh, going to repeat, uh, according to what uh, uh, we have heard today, the control for water supply or production or distribution of water is the result of some interference uh, with some mechanism that we uh, include in the um, uh, in the grid, whether it's control valves or to take the water to a higher uh, height um, and uh, simultaneous dissipation of energy. The control will be the result um, of the influence um, um, commanded by us that we wanted to put in the, the transport or distribution of water regarding control of valves because it's my working field and um, um, the presentation is in that sense. We have uh, defined the four main control areas uh, talking about uh, the pressure control, reduction or sus sustaining the pressure or any action and as a control valve, we'll have a direct action on pressure, so the reaction will always be to create a loss of load in the uh, grid, whether it's to control pressure, to control uh, reservoir levels or um, flows. And in terms of valves, the um, uh, protection valves, these are the ones used to uh, alleviate the pressure, anticipate um, uh, a, a loss, uh, and um, anything to do with the other organs in the grid. Uh, with a fifth um, point over here, uh, reusing uh, energy, uh, this is a measure that will contribute in a richer way to the increase of efficiency in the water grid, but it must also be measured, calculated, and assessed, and assess the potential of application and the payback on investment itself. 
the functioning uh, principle in a basic way. I don't know if I can point over here on the screen. Um, the lines in blue above the valve are the pilot system, in other words, uh, the, the uh, hydraulic control uh, valve is piloted. Uh, the valve itself is the hard part, is the main body. Um, uh, it is deaf, dumb, and not intelligent, so it will just uh, uh, reproduce um, uh, the behavior that the pilot uh, defines. Um, and now the um, application of pressure in the valve, when it has uh, uh, pressure upstream, you can see on the left, um, on your left, um, which will place water within the lid of the valve in a dark blue. This is uh, the pressure upstream and will allow uh, water to uh, leave or not uh, this valve. So this will close the valve and water coming out will cause it to open with the closed valve if uh, the pilot is closed with uh, the pressure reducer. Uh, in when you have a level control, when we have the maximum level defined in the reservoir, then the pilot will close. By closing, the main valve will close. If the pilot opens, the valve will open. If the pilot is uh, measuring the variable with a proportional control, the valve will have intermediate position by maintaining the control in the uh, grid. In this presentation, I'm going to divide the systems uh, into two main divisions because this has to do uh, with the result that we can have from the action on those systems. We have the water supply and water distribution system, so d different uh, complexities. And, um, uh, and here I'm talking about only the technical issues, uh, in other words, uh, pressure measurements and level measurements in a, a transport system is completely different from the distribution system, so I'll divide this presentation into those two fields. Um, in uh, the transport system, we have a water origin which is not represented over here in this schematic. This um, uh, represents transport from uh, the uh, reducer to the uh, storage uh, reservoir. We have a known origin with uh, uh, stable conditions of pressure and the flow. We have transport to reservoir. And we have a level control in the reservoir, which is common practice in 99.9% .9 of facilities. This is uh, how uh, they are working. They have a, um, a level control. And if this uh, load is too high, it can have uh, a uh, pressure reducing valve or not. Uh, the conditions are stable. And here I'd like to make an analogy for the need that uh, all uh, bodies have of maintenance, in other words, for the stable functioning. And also the frequencies of maintenance. We need um, stable uh, functioning conditions uh, will cause uh, less problems in terms of longe longevity and uh, the uh, life of the equipment. So in terms of uh, energy reuse, we will have a uh, loss of load, which is necessary to maintain the system in security and, and safety. And uh, in case we need to have energy reuse with uh, pumps and pumps working as uh, turbines, whatever, we need to, to take advantage and reuse that energy that we're dissipating through the valve. From the studies already carried out and mentioned earlier, the potential. Here we have a pot potential energy that is uh, totally av available and non-variable. The potential of investment and payback on this uh, investment will be optimized in a situation like this in which the conditions are stable and the available load is always the same without many uh, great variations. Uh, either we have water all in movement or totally stopped. So that would be the ideal situation. As we've already heard before and regarding the control valves, the practice that we recommend as good practice, the ideal is to have uh, the installation with uh, 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 reduction um, valve and bypass. In case we needed to have maintenance to re uh, reduce so we don't need to interrupt the water supply if we need access to the turbine because of a stoppage or because we have limitations and barriers that can be placed uh, regarding the f equipment functioning or have an excess or lack or because something happened in the grid that uh, prevents us of, uh, from having the best uh, efficiency. The bypass is always the ideal to be dependent, uh, not to be dependent on only one line so that we can avoid these problems. Talking a little bit about um, 
the house to be used in this kind of uh, facility. We have uh, the uh, simple air reducers or with remote control. I'm talking about the hydraulic uh, question more because of what we can do. Where we have uh, electrical supply, we can change these variables that we need or that we wanted to control. We can have a, um, a reducing uh, pressure working. If we have con a remote control, we can um, control it with uh, uh, flows, levels, whatever. We have sensors in the installation that we can control the way we see fit. When we don't have this electrical supply, we have to fall on the hydraulic. And if energy, uh, electrical energy is cut out, this ensures the functioning of the equipment and its protection hydraulic. Since we have uh, flow and pressure, is always ready to work. Um, the reducer can be simple or with remote control. Controlling the level will work the same way. We can have hydraulic um, control or electric controls that can allow us to manage the variables or the system according to our needs. Going to uh, water distribution systems, the issue is a little bit more complex um, even for pressure uh, control or management. Um, here, let me call your attention to the man, uh, pressure management and the efficiency of the water distribution systems um, because um, a management of the pressure that is more efficient will be the one that is adapted to the profiles of consumption in the grid. The grids can be some, somewhat complex, uh, slightly uh, complex or very complex uh, depending on the way they are built because this is common to all cities uh, on all corners of uh, the country. Um, cities uh, grew, cities grew, and the networks were not dimensioned uh, right from the beginning for the needs of uh, population growth or uh, the territorial um, extension of these villages. So they were always added on, and this is a problem uh, that um, uh, is a problem for all companies, be they private or public. Um, in terms of the pressure management, from the point of view of the definition of the valve, which is ideal for the installation with what uh, energy reuse makes this issue a bit more complex. The available energy uh, to uh, potential reuse is variable now, as we've already mentioned, uh, I think by Engineer Saldana, in terms of the over or under dimension, and talking about valves, uh, they have to be um, sized correctly for the flows uh, in case of fire, which is something which is uh, an aggravation, they have to comply with peaks uh, of uh, uh, fires that we hope uh, are never ne necessary, but they have to be uh, foreseen. Those who have water supplies, some of those present here, know the problem of the ideal situation being the whole main uh, installation of the bypass, not only for maintenance, but also maybe to uh, place ideally uh, different sized valves so that the nominal and real flow can work within a smaller valve within the ideal uh, standards of uh, consumption. In the peak, we have another uh, relief valve that would be the ideal situation. And in reality, that's not always possible because of different issues. And because of the experience that I have already 14 years working on, on, on this, uh, I think this has a lot to do with not only with the cost itself of the installation, but the lack of provision for that cost. I didn't give you this example here, but in a valve box of 80 millimeters, for example, in which you have a, a pressure reducer, in which we foresee the construction of a new uh, valve box in the city center in which to open up um, uh, a, a space for uh, a box, uh, some uh, parts with or without bypasses, the difference for an investment, for example, of 10,000 euros will be another 1,000. So in the beginning of a work, uh, this is absolutely irrelevant in terms of this addition. Um, and I'd just like to leave you with this idea because it, it seems irrelevant, but to make th this question of having the reducer using bypass with turbines or with another reducer, whatever other way, if it really exists, it makes everything simpler. If it doesn't exist, it might imply a new work. Uh, so it can place us in the field of moving on or, on the other hand, not being able to do so regarding the issue of uh, pressure and pressure management. Uh, what do we want in a distribution uh, grid? Maintain this uh, uh, value as low as possible, which meets the needs of uh, the grid, but does not uh, over 
place um, too much pressure on the grid that they have um, distinct uh, capacities and functions. Leakages exist, we cannot el eliminate all of them. If we maintain pressure in the lowest possible pressure to satisfy all consumers, we for sure can have uh, less water that uh, is being lost uh, in the places we are already losing some regarding amplitudes. The lower the variation that we are able to get uh, an amplitude of pressures within the grid, uh, the lower the stress that we cause in the pipes, so the lower frequency of leakages that we all have. And now let me move on to the final part of this presentation, which has to do with the um, pressure management models. Okay, now let me um, um, speed up a little bit. Um, I had left this out, but I'll put it back here again for a simple reason the efficiency of the application of a simple reducer in a grid where pressure is not being controlled or minimized uh, has more impact very often than uh, um, placing a super valve with super control with uh, um, measures of uh, pressure in critical point and uh, the uh, automaton then placing a simple pressure reducer re re reducer i think you mentioned this in your presentation in the case of kashkaish where you had uh, this bypass um, in, um, sometimes uh, we uh, oversee one bar, 1.5 or even half a bar can make all the difference depending on the characteristics of the grid. That's why I think, and I share this opinion from our, uh, my colleagues, it's important to know, measure, analyze and take the steps after the analysis. In terms of the sophistication of the solution, it can also allow us to have a result in efficiency and a reduction of uh, leakages and losses, uh, which is proportional. We can use in the grid models of remote control of these valves through the uh, measurement of pressure um, and the flow. Here we can have support from electrical supply. The reducer uh, can be a standalone and completely self-sufficient if we want modulation per consumption to adapt 24 hours a day to the characteristics of consumption. We have to have instruments. We have to have pressure measurement and flow measurement and automaton of controlling the valve. And all these need to be um, supplied. If in this, uh, we can have energy reuse that can also uh, supply these instruments that would be the ideal condition and to end off um, we have the maximum optimization will be um, uh, remote node uh, modulation we have pressure measurement uh, in the grid where the pressure is at, at its lowest and we have the transmission of its value for the control valve or the automaton that will control the control valve uh, difficulties in applying this it's the most sophisticated solution it's, it's the one that allows us to have the best uh, results but it's the most complex to install because to know the critical point uh, um, and to be in a uh, point that is easily measured, we need uh, um, pressure measurements from this place to the place where we have the valve or other instruments. It has to be very well assessed and we need to evaluate the costs of implementing this. And here I'd like to end off uh, this presentation uh, by making the analogy in the distribution grids. Um, if I have the possibility of, of having energy reuse, we need to measure the conditions of applying it because we can have characteristics or needs for pressure and flow that uh, uh, will not allow us to put the, uh, the equipment in the correct and ideal place and that will lead to investment that will not have payback in the time that we would uh, uh, see it as ideal. So the application for control valves, like any other form that will contribute to the energy efficiency, we should take a look at these conditions. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Kemi, Dr. Kemi, can you help me? Um, doctor, coming, could you please help me? Todos nós aqui presentes. Uh, let me explain to you. We have all heard these presentations, but we now uh, will see f seven questions. On the left-hand side in English and on the right side in Portuguese. If you do not have these devices, please pick them up over there and for you to vote in each question in order to give us your answer. And you have 30 seconds to do that.
okay? You can vote the first one. Is it counting? Passe para lá. Please pass there. I think it's easier. Okay. Pode. Sim. Rápido. Okay. This is the. No. Ah, it's now. This is the first one. Okay, this is the first question. Please read in English or in Portuguese and let's try to answer. Nove segundos, oito, sete. Okay. The second question, you can read in English and podem ler logo a seguir em português. You can read in English or in Portuguese. Para quem ainda não tinha votado. Tem... For those who hadn't voted yet, you still have some time. <laughs> Double vote <laughs> here. <laughs> Estamos duas vezes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> okay. Pergunta três. Third question. Can you read it? We have twenty-five answers, but we need more. Just come down, okay? This is our reality show, okay? <laughs> Let's see. Who is the best? I think it's Roy. <laughs> okay. okay. Next one. Next one, okay. Pergunta number four. Question number four. Here you can choose three answers, up to three answers. Select three options. Since we have three options to select, we have a little more time, okay? Uma vez que temos três respostas a dar, começamos a contar um bocadinho mais tarde para poder dar tempo. Pergunta número 5. Question number 5. And here you can choose 
Again, three options. Estamos a dar um pouco mais tempo para We're giving you a little bit more time for you to vote. Act the three questions. Three answers. A partir de agora, temos só 25 segundos. 25 seconds from now. type of results. <laughs> she was elected Miss Portugal. Só temos mais duas questões. Two questions left. Yeah, you have to rank one as highest and three lowest. Point, okay. The highest classification, two medium and three lowest. Okay, you can count down. Ten seconds. And now we have the last question. And the same type of vote, one for the highest point, okay, that you consider most important, two medium, and th three for the lowest. Okay, um, o ponto consideram mais relevante. One for the highest, and three for the lowest importance. is the countdown. Kemi, we start later, okay? So, <laughs> this is not bad. I know two minutes. Okay, since we have no much time, I'd like to make a, a summarized. A summarized, and after this summarized, uh, we can make two or three questions to, to close the section, okay? In terms of summarized, I'd like to enhance, uh, I, I will talk in English now, I would like to enhance uh, that the importance of water industry in the Atlantic area since it is uh, uh, the most energy intensive consumer. <laughs> and uh, of course, uh, through the redown presented by Dr. John Gallagher, uh, the energy efficiency is very important. 
uh, for the all types of water networks, not only for drinking systems, but also for irrigation and, and the process industry. Um, uh, since we have water flowing in our uh, flowing in our in our pipe systems, even can be applied, of course, in open channel flows for irrigation systems. Uh, we have to adapt our machine uh, for these situations too. A second point, it was about the scarcity of water and increasing of water demand. It is more and more required new efficiency and effectiveness solutions. Uh, as mentioned by, by Rui Silva Santos in uh, through his company, is developing a very interesting study and he's, he is open to, to analyze other systems uh, uh, from other municipality uh, uh, systems in order to, uh, to, to um, uh, evaluate the possibility to make recoverable energy in the pipe systems. Uh, and of course, this is important since it connects the water energy nexus, and uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the main factor for the near future. In terms of the solutions uh, from KSB, the engineer Nuno Leixo presented uh, the PET technology. Different configurations can be obtained. The comparison between a pump and a pump working as a turbine in the reverse mode. In the, the fourth uh, point, it is about the, some key factors uh, about the success in water loss reduction, uh, presented by Indaqua, Engineer Pedro Perdigão. Uh, since the motivation to change its importance, very important and definition of best strategy to obtain good performance indicators. And if you have these good performance indicators, of course, this will affect the overall performance system. The next point, it was about uh, uh, an overview of a new micro turbine. I heard about this uh, when I was in, in a SMPGA in Normandy, uh, in France, and it was great to bring uh, also here the solution presented by the Pont à Mousson, uh, Saint Gobain, uh, através da representação portuguesa, through the Portuguese representation here. Um, we have a compact micro turbine adapted for different situations. Uh, for high and low pressures, it is quite versatile and uh, can be used in the water sector. At the, the, the last not the least, okay. <laughs> the control valves uh, and the potential energy recovery are quite important in terms of the efficiency of water systems. This, this conference is about water efficiency. It is, of course, correlated with several types of valves that we need to install in our uh, water networks to control the pressure, to control the flow, and why not to uh, incorporate also some micro turbine in this type of valves, okay? We can try to integrate the different solutions that uh, some years ago we thought um, um, in different parts, okay? Individualizing, individualizing uh, the, the different components. Now, nowadays, we can integrate this and optimize our solution. I would like to thank all the speakers all this, uh, and the audience. Somebody comes from Madeira. It's very important to enhance the interest on this uh, uh, subject. Okay, to finalize, I would like to ask one or two questions to the, uh, to the experts. We have no much time, but we can discuss, if you are interested, discuss the industry uh, that come here and all the experts are invited for the lunch. Um, and we can discuss some ac issues, some experts during the lunch time. We have to fill the, the, the schedule okay, of uh, this conference, so we have no much time. If you have one or two questions, no? If not, yeah, okay. We're sorry, but we have no sound from the audience in the booth. Gabriela, Gabriela, you need the microphone in order to be translate this. Okay. Um, 
Muito boa tarde. Eu gostava. Good afternoon. I would like to know if, regarding the redone, um, the irrigation project on the left bank of the Godania River, which is in a project phase, it hasn't started yet, if we shouldn't have an action with IDM and the project being carried out in the sense of integrating this equipment, this equipment to increase the efficiency of the grid, which in this case it will be the primary grid, and then it, it will become the secondary grid. It's one of the places where I think um, uh, we would have a greater yield since it hasn't been built yet because after the grid has been built with its uh, dis distribution that I know um, several uh, distribution grids in Portugal it's very complicated because it becomes highly expensive nevertheless there are places where this could be uh, um, researched and integrated thank you I don't know if anybody present can answer yes engineer Well, answering specifically in terms of microturbines, we have already made a presentation to the ADA board and uh, its technicians uh, in the sense of giving them all the knowledge, all the technical details of this solution of energy production. Uh, we can say that the presentation that we did at ADA to all the technical staff and um, all the collaborators of IDEA from the technical area, uh, be it from the engineering or maintenance. Um, uh, and we also uh, presented to the board a more complete uh, presentation. So today we had 15 minutes. Uh, we had to just skim the surface. But uh, at EDIA, we had a full presentation on this solution. Well, now, regarding other uh, f facilities and equipment, uh, of course, my colleagues uh, can answer that. I'd, uh, I'd like to ask you to be brief because, uh, because of time, because at 1 o'clock, we have another session from uh, KSB. We have... Um, a solution for some uh, we have, um, a collaboration with IDEA because of the turbines. IDEA is um, knows our product very well in solutions, not only as pump says turbines, but also uh, the turbines for this application. Uh, we I have a slight idea that from IDEA, one of the issues are placed, uh, they usually need the pumps for pressure for the irrigation uh, grid, and they don't have so much need uh, for the uh, re uh, reuse or the reduction of that uh, pressure. I think there's another question. Um, well, they can uh, have some interest in this. They can answer for themselves uh, um, for uh, a point here. They, those projects, uh, fr namely on the left bank of the Guadiana, those projects have already been done and are ready to be launched. It's somewhat difficult, uh, uh, I think, uh, for them to be able to change them, but it, it is undoubtedly a question with potential, and just like in many other entities, I think we have the need for them to see something working uh, to have as an example and start thinking more seriously on that application. But it's an interesting idea. And by the looks of it, uh, Sangoga has already spoken about this, uh, we've already mentioned this, and uh, we are pushing things towards uh, uh, that so that we can open up people's minds. It's a question that is relatively new, and there's uh, some fear in starting here, even in, in terms of people who make the projects, uh, to um, get themselves committed regarding the main goal. But uh, we are betting on that uh, to see if we can reach that. Uh, so we've already understood there's a change in paradigm. So. We are thinking about only in, uh, energy cons uh, uh, use for uh, pumping, but now we are also think about hydro production, even at a small scale. So I'd like to in one more question. Okay. Well, you said two. Okay, so now there are two. 
I'm Tom Carrillo, I'm a VP of the Sozel City Hall in Alentejo, and we're here with pleasure to see if we can learn something with everybody here. And I'd like to uh, mention the, uh, the uh, lack of fundamental play for this project, uh, which is nowadays it, it doesn't make any sense to have a project without include this technology. So uh, um, uh, the absence of those players is uh, a, a something lacking in the organization. I apologize for mentioning this. Uh, um, but now my question for the engineers, which is as follows. If you have an idea, any notion of the percentage of the energy of energy recovery versus the energy um, used uh, in a distribution grid, I'm talking about a distribution project um, uh, of distribution of water to a population. Roy, maybe you can help. Thank you. This is difficult uh, to cover everything and uh, meet uh, all the interests. Um, so we tried to bring as much as we were able to. Is this working? Well, the question is, well, as we've already mentioned uh, previously, uh, we cannot generalize this, uh, including in the situation that uh, we saw in Madeira, which is an average inclination of 23.5%, which is much higher uh, than that of our Alentej, but even there it's very complicated not to have to choose only between a very limited area. The example we gave previously in the pilot area in Funchal, we are creating 50 new um, levels and they only have potential for that recovery in terms of distribution network in terms of three since we have very high uh, flows and a lot of inclination. So in my opinion, it's not possible to, to say what we are able to get or not generally in a generalized way. We have to do this case by case. An example that we gave in Madeira, when you have the a possibility of these three, we also have a high potential in the areas of low consumption, which is in terms of the distribution in supply. But usually, th these are not the city halls that uh, take decisions or uh, other companies. And for the reservoir controls, there I think we have a lot of potential in, in the areas of low consumption. It's very difficult to have many facilities that can have that recovery in areas with great flows and uh, um, differences in heights, that's possible. As I say, I don't see it possible to generalize in terms of number, but this is really case by case, as all my colleagues showed uh, regarding micro turbines. Microphone, microphone. So before we to remember the lunch is in the restaurant universitario the same place as yesterday but for the ones who just arrived today when you leave this